Hello everyone, it's Lola here again. I welcome you all back to my kitchen. So today we are going to be making hot cross buns. This is one of my favorite bread to make because I love spice and I love bread. So both of them combined together makes a delicious spiced bread. So let's go ahead and put everything together. I've got my raisins here and I'm going to be pouring about three quarter cups of apple juice to that by the way i just boiled the apple juice and you can also use rum if you want to go a step further and if you want to tone it down just go with plain water now i'm just going to go ahead and set this aside i've got my milk here so that i'm going to be adding a teaspoon of white sugar and one tablespoon of yeast go ahead and mix that together we want the yeast to be well dissolved inside the milk. Okay, so I'll just go ahead and set this aside and I'm going to wait for about five minutes for the yeast to proof. I've got three and a half cups of bread flour here. I prefer to use bread flour for all my bread. To that, I will be adding my cinnamon and my nutmeg together with salt and I'm going to be adding my brown sugar as well. For this brown sugar, make sure it's tightly packed. Now go ahead and whisk everything together. Okay, so now my yeast is well proved. And to that, I'm going to be adding one egg and my melted butter. I'll also be mixing that thoroughly until everything is well combined. Okay. I'm going to be using the zest of one orange. This is a fresh orange that I plucked from my neighbor's house. <laughs> it's better to use you know, organic orange if you'll be using the zest like I'm doing because you know, it's free of pesticides. So I'll be setting this aside as well. So here I've got about a quarter cup of bread flour. I might be using this later depending on the consistency of my dough. I'm going to be mixing my dough today using my food processor. I'm sorry my mixer broke down and I want to show you that you can still make your bread using your food processor. So while I shop for another mixer, we will be using this for now. So that is my flour mixture. And to that, I'm going to be adding my yeast mixture, then my orange zest. I'll be using the pulse button to process this. Look at that, can you see it's coming together already? Okay. Okay. So I just want to show you the texture of the dough before we proceed. Can you see this? It's really soft and that is why you cannot really work it with your hand. So the best thing to use is either your food processor or your stand mixer. So I'm just going to go ahead and continue to mix this. If you are using a food processor, you're going to use about four to five minutes. And if you use a stand mixer, you're going to use about eight to 10 minutes. So let's continue. My dough is really sticky at this point and by now it should be releasing itself from you know, the edges of my processor. So I'm going to add a little bit of flour to this. Remember, like I said earlier, it's going to be a very soft dough. So don't be tempted to use too much flour. Okay, now our dough is all done. I used my pulse button to process this for about four minutes, stopping in between so that I don't overwork my food processor. I'll be pouring my dough inside my bowl now. Now look at the texture of the dough. You see, it's stretchy and very soft. Look at it. So that is exactly what we want. Let's check how our raisins. As you can see, they've become plump and juicy. That is exactly what we want. So I'll just go ahead and drain this 
and pour that inside my dough. I'll now be mixing the raisins inside the dough but before I do that I already oiled my hand a little bit just to be able to manage the dough properly. If you feel the dough is getting too sticky again feel free to oil your hand a little bit. And after about a minute or two, you should have been able to incorporate all the raisins inside the dough. I'll now be covering this and I'm going to be leaving this to rest for about one hour until it's doubled or almost doubled in size. My bread dough is well risen, but before I open it, I like to brush my pan. I'm brushing this with some butter at room temperature. Then I'm going to go ahead and dust this with some flour. You can use any flour for this, all-purpose flour or bread flour. It's all well and good. Just make sure the flour coats, you know, all the sides and bottom of the pan. Oh yeah, that is it. Here we go. My dough is well risen, as you can see. Look at that. It's about two times its original size. So I'll just go ahead and punch the dough down to remove all the trapped air. So once that is done, I'll be dusting my work surface. A little bit of flour is fine at this point. Then transfer the dough to the work surface. Now I'll be dividing this dough into 12 equal parts. Well, I'm going to try to make it as, <laughs> as equal as I can. So I'm going to be taking each of this dough and I'm going to be rolling it into a ball shape. Be sure to roll it as tight as you can. Look at that. So as you are forming each ball, just be dropping them into the prepared pan. Be sure to dust your hand with some flour if you feel the dough is sticking to your hands. That is going to make the work a little easier for you. For the second rise, I'm going to be covering this with a damp kitchen towel. And I'm using a damp towel because I don't want the surface of the bread to get crusty before it rises. So we'll be back in 30 minutes time. Our bread is well risen, but before I open it, I like to make my flour mixture. And this is what I'm going to use to make my crust on the dough. So here I have half cup of flour. You can use bread flour or all-purpose flour, that's fine. And to that I'm going to be adding five tablespoons of water. Just give that a good mix. If you feel the batter is too thick, feel free to add a little bit of water at a time just to thin it out. Okay, so this is all good. Can you see the texture? Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and scoop this inside a plastic bag. You can use a piping bag or a Ziploc bag at this point. Today I'm going to be using a Ziploc. Here we go guys. As you can see, my buns are well risen and they are looking so beautiful right now. I'm going to go ahead and pipe my flour mixture over the dough. I already cut off the tip. I'm going to go ahead and make a cross sign on this. But I'm going to start first by making a straight line, just like this. Okay, now I'm done piping it all straight. I'm going to go ahead and make the cross right now. I will go ahead and be putting this in my oven. I already preheated my oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And this is going to be baking for about 20 minutes or a little more or less. My buns are almost done. I have a few more minutes, but before I you know, take them out of the oven, I'm going to be making my sugar glaze. To do that, I've got a quarter of a cup of water together with a quarter of a cup of sugar. And for the glaze, you can also use you know, jam, like um, apricot jam, strawberry jam, or whatever. But today I'm just going with sugar and water. And to make the sugar dissolve, you know, a little faster, you can warm it up a little bit. That's actually what I did. So we are going to go ahead and mix this 
very well until the sugar is totally dissolved. So here we go guys, our buns are all done. As you can see, they are looking golden on the surface and they are kind of lightly brown. But at this point, I'm going to brush them with my sugar and water mixture. As you can see, they are becoming golden brown. So this is exactly what we want. The sugar syrup is not only going to make the buns shine, but it's also going to add a little bit of more sweetness to the buns. So here we go guys, this is our final product. Isn't that looking good? Okay now, so I'm going to take one of these buns and open it up so you can see how it looks like on the inside. As you can see, it's super soft and honestly, it smells super amazing here. The spices are just incredible. So that is it again for today. Thank you very much for spending your time with me. As usual, all the details you need to today's recipe can be found in the description box below. Until next time, I'll talk to you shortly. Enjoy.